A terminal alkyne is a molecule that has a carbon-carbon triple bond at the end of its carbon chain. So something that would look like, like this, where the triple bond is at the end of the chain. If the triple bond is inside the molecule, we would call that an internal alkyne. Terminal alkynes are prepared by an E2 reaction, really similar to preparing alkenes via an E2 reaction. You can start with two different types of molecules. Both of them are dihalides, so they both have two halogens. And those two halogens can either be on the same carbon, like we have in this molecule, or the two halogens can be on adjacent carbons, like we have right here. Uh, just for reference, when we have two halogens on the same carbon, this type of molecule right here, this is called a geminal or gem dihalide. And then when the carbon atoms are, excuse me, when the halogens are on adjacent carbons, we call that vicinal dihalide. So either geminal or vicinal dihalide can be turned into a terminal alkyne with an elimination reaction. This reaction is not quite as favorable as E2 on a, uh, to form an alkene. We need a stronger base for this reaction. And the base that we use for this reaction is NH2 minus. Uh, that's called amide, and it is usually in an ammonia solution. So NH2 minus comma NH3. And as you can see, this is gonna be a multi-step reaction. The second step is to treat the, the product with water, and that will ultimately give us this alkyne. So in this reaction, we are eliminating two halogens and two hydrogens. So both of those are going away and we're forming the triple bond in this position right here, retaining whatever R group may have already been present on the carbon chain as well as this hydrogen out here. If we're using a vicinal dihalide, everything is exactly the same. So we use the same reagents, amide in ammonia, followed by water, and we get the exact same product. And again, we're eliminating two halogens and two hydrogens, retaining the R group. This becomes our carbon-carbon triple bond. Um, let's take a look at the mechanism so that we can understand the role of water in this reaction and get a little bit of an idea of how this product is actually formed. So we're going to, for a mechanism, I am going to use a geminal dihalide as my example. The mechanism is going to be exactly the same for a vicinal dihalide. Because this is E2, the base, amide, is gonna be grabbing any one of the hydrogens on this carbon, so any one of those three. The carbon-hydrogen bonding electrons will come in to make a carbon-carbon double bond initially, and we'll get rid of one of the halogens as a leaving group. So this initially is going to give us an alkene. Looks like this. Now, if we're doing this with a vicinal dihalide, our halogen would actually be out here in this position. Um, these two groups would be swapped with each other, but we would still end up with this alkene. Now, we are doing this reaction with an excess amount of the base, so we'll get a second amide, a second NH2 to come in and just repeat. We're going to grab another hydrogen. We're gonna move the carbon-hydrogen bonding electrons in one more time. That will make the triple bond and we'll get rid of our leaving group one more time. And so now we have the alkyne. And it looks like this reaction is over, but it's actually not because we have an excess of amide. It's very difficult to control this reaction with stoichiometry. So no matter how hard we try, we're going to end up with a lot of amide present. And that amide is such a strong base that it's actually gonna try to go again. So it's gonna grab that third hydrogen. Now this time, 
it's not an option for the carbon hydrogen bonding electrons to move in to form yet another bond because this carbon already has four bonds around it and there is no leaving group on here. You can't get rid of an R group that's not a leaving group. So there's nowhere um, for these electrons to go other than to move on to the carbon atom as a lone pair. So we will end up with this. And this is the product that we get at the end of step one in this reaction. Now, this is not the product that we want to make. We're trying to make an alkyne. So then we have our step two, where we bring in some water or any sort of acid, anything that's acidic will work. And we will protonate. So a lone pair of electrons on that carbon will come in and steal a hydrogen from whatever, like water, and now we have our alkyne. One of the really interesting things about this reaction is that regardless of where the halogens are located along the carbon chain, this reaction always produces a terminal alkyne. So in, in this example uh, with the mechanism and the examples on the previous slide, it was clear that it was set up to produce a terminal alkyne. But if you have a molecule like this, where we have a vicinal dihalide and the halogens are inside the molecule, we might think that this reaction would produce this alkyne right here where we're getting elimination in between the two halogens that would be a very logical assumption for us to make but in fact that is not the product that is formed in this reaction no matter where the halogens are located within the molecule we always produce a terminal alkyne so the the molecule as it undergoes its reaction mechanism it ends up shifting the alkyne out to the end of the carbon chain. So we always produce a terminal alkyne when we're using these reagents. We do have ways of making an internal alkyne, but these reagents will always produce a terminal alkyne regardless of where our halogens may be located on the carbon chain.